So, um, do you do you do you want me to be honest or just speak, you know, political correctness here? But I, I choose to be honest with you. I choose to be honest with you, and um, for me to be honest with you, I have to go back a little bit. But let me start with the situation that we're facing in this country today. If you believe that those that are in power in Nigeria today would ever contemplate the possibility of giving power to an Igbo man in 2023 or thereafter, then you still haven't fully understood the challenge and the problem that we have in this country today. You need to understand that the mindset of some of these people, not all, some, but those that Buhari represents, that is his own clique within the Fulani ruling class, not all Fulanis, but his own clique, who are in power today. Their mindset is that the most dangerous people in this country and the people that they must suppress more than any other are the people of the Southeast. And you need to understand that before the Civil War, and I need to go back in history because that's a damn good question, and it deserves a clear answer, a thorough answer. Let's go back a little bit. Before the Civil War, these same people, he, for example, was active then. And you need to remember the role that they played on the night of July 29th, 1966, when the Northern Officers' Counter Coup took place, and 300 Igbo officers were killed in one night including an Igbo head of state. He was involved. And many of them that are running this country in Akabal today were involved or he supported it. They said it was to pay back for what had happened in January 15th, 1966. Now, after that, what happened? The same people unleashed their people on Igbo civilians in the northern part of this country and the figure that is often cited is 30,000 were killed. It's not true. Closer to 100,000. Not only were they killed, people, women, had their stomachs cut open. And little babies were pulled out and their heads were dashed against the wall. That is what they did then in 1966, before the Civil War. And the Igbos were slaughtered like flies all over the north by these same people. They went rushing back to the east, where they believed they were safe. And the position was this. The leader of the core northern Muslims within the army, Murtala Muhammad, urged um, Gawan, who was head of state, to march on the east immediately and wipe out the Ibus. Gawan, to his credit, refused to do that and said, no, let's negotiate. And the negotiation started. They broke down. Then there was a civil war. In that civil war, three million Igbos were killed by federal forces. They were killed by all of us. I'm, a, I'm, I'm from the Southwest. I take responsibility for that, as every other Nigerian ought to. Civilians, not soldiers, three million, including one million children, subjected to genocide, subjected to mass murder, subjected to ethnic cleansing by us. The war ended. We did not apologize. Instead, what did we do? What did we do? We took all their property in the name of abandoned property. We gave them 20 pounds, even if they had a million in the bank. And we said, come back, no victor, no vanquish. Biggest lie from the pit of hell. There was a victor and there was a vanquished. And we all know who was who. They came back into Nigeria and we reintegrated them. But even with all the reintegration, no Igbo man could be trusted to be general officer commanding GOC until Obasanjo came to power in 1999. Igbos were not allowed to rise up within the military or in any power configuration in the country. It was, a, it, was, it, was a, it was something that was understood that you never put an Igbo man in a position of real power. You can give him appointments, but you don't put him in a position of real power. Okay. Obasanjo came, made General Biaku, Abiaku, I think his name was, um, GOC. And then from there, Jonathan came. He appointed an Igbo chief of army staff. Okay? Uh, uh, yes, yes, yes. It, 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 my wife is reminding me of the name, Eheji <laughs> You know? He appointed uh, an Igbo chief of army staff. Okay? 
And we thought things would go on that way. There would be a reintegration of the Igbos. And Obasanjo Joy integrated many Igbos, people like Obia uh Andy Uba, so many came in and playing key roles, key positions. We thought things would get better. And unfortunately for us, though, in 2015, everything changed because Nigerians elected, in quotation marks, a man that had, again, I say it again, a different worldview and went back to the pre-1966 disposition and mentality of things. And that position was that Igbos cannot be trusted. Igbos have no rights. Igbos are members of the, he called them 5%, I believe, that didn't vote for him. And his mindset was he will teach Igbos the lesson of their lives. And he has done precisely that. If the killings had stopped then, I would have said, okay, fine. Everything we said is history. But sadly, it didn't stop. Igbo youths, IPOB youths, Igbo nationalists have been killed under this government. More have been killed than at any other time during the, uh, apart from during the Civil War under this government. Igbos have been hopelessly maligned by the government. Igbos have been treated with contempt by this government. Not just Igbos. Southerners, Christians, and Middle Belters, they've added that one as well. And that's what's going on. And what the Igbos was subjected to by all of us in 1966 is what we are all being subjected to now by those that are around Buhari. Now, going to your question, given all that, given all that, before I come to that, let me just add this. IPOP says they want to have a referendum. They want the right to self-determine. And you label them as terrorists when none of them has ever carried a gun, as far as I'm aware. I was in prison with Namdi Kanu. I had an extensive discussions with him. I got to know him. I understood his mindset, and I could feel his pain for his people. Yet they say they want to have a referendum. You say they're terrorists. Meanwhile, those that are butchering our people every day in the name of ethnic domination and hegemony, in the name of furthering the ambitions and the aspirations of Usman Danfodio and, Sa and Saamadu Bello and Buhari himself, the three Mahdi's, you don't call them terrorists. You pat them on the back, you refuse to arrest any of them. And you say what they're doing is okay. You encourage them. Okay? And the same you, free Boko Haram terrorists, the same you, once said that you want to apply Sharia all over the country. The same you said Muslims should only vote for Muslims. The same you says a Boko, an attack on Boko Haram is, a, is an attack on the North. The same you has said so many things which implicitly are on line and on all fours with the Boko Haram philosophy. These are the people that have been ruling us for five years. And the same you has empowered the Fulani to a point that they have everything now. And you really believe that those people in 2023 will sit down and say that they will allow a situation to arise whereby the one they hate the most, the one they hate the most, can possibly take power in this country? They will not allow that to happen. Now, if you ask me what I think, I think that would be the way forward as an individual. That if you really want to appease the Southeast, indeed the people of the South, why on earth not? Why shouldn't we have that? But the reality is that those that control the levers of power are diametrically opposed to that philosophy. They don't pretend not to be. They will never deny it. And they're not even hiding it. So they won't allow that to happen. What they will tell you at the very best is possibly will give vice presidency to the Southeast. And in a situation like that, if they did that, and the president, the northern president came to power, and something happened to him, I assure you they will never let an Igbo man take power. It's their mindset. Even the one that's there now, the Yoruba man that's there as VP. If anything happens to Buhari, I doubt very much they'll let him take power. The position that they have adopted is that power must remain in the north, um, you know, in perpetuity for as long as possible. And they have rationalized it over and over again. So that's the situation that we're in. But left to me, two things. The first thing is this. That would go a long way to 
heal the wounds of the past, an apology for what we did to the Southeasterners and to the Igbos during the Civil War. Secondly, proper compensation and reparations for what we did to them. Thirdly, to now openly come forward and say, let an Igbo man be president of Nigeria. Because they've never had an elected Igbo, uh, we've never had a, an Igbo man leading us with power. Let it happen. That is what I would suggest. That's the first one. The other one is this. If it is, you know you can't do that. And if it is, that the time for that has passed, because many Igbos will tell you, particularly those that share the philosophy of people like Nam Dikanu and even um, Masob philosophy, they will tell you they're not interested in that anymore. Then the other thing you can do is say, allow them to determine their own future, just as the people of Scotland were allowed to determine theirs. Just as Britain, the United Kingdom, was allowed to determine hers when it came to Brexit, just as so many other countries in the world, through a referendum and exercising the right of self-determination. And I think that would make far more sense than to say just give them an Igbo presidency, which you and I know is not likely to happen. Let me end with this, okay? We are approaching 2023. Some in the Southwest, specifically Bola Tinumbu, believes that his party will field him. I will tell you this today. He has made the biggest mistake of his life. They will not support him. Their position is to keep the presidency in the North. And even if he manages to clinch the nomination for the APC, they will now shift their support to another party that will field a Northern candidate. Mark what I'm telling you today, because I've been right nine times out of 10 when it comes to these predictions. I've been right. And I'm telling you, I'll be, I'll be proved right again. That is the mess that we're in, in this country. So your aspirations are legitimate. You have every right to have an Igbo president. It will be a good thing for this country, for the people of the East, and indeed for the people of Africa. But those that believe they own Nigeria will not allow it, they will not accept it, and they will not create a level playing field for it. And that's the reality. How is Nigeria? Eh? 58. In two years' time, Nigeria will be how many? 60. The state of the nation, if I should talk to you on what I suggest, what we need in Nigeria now is an Igbo president. An Igbo president. You want to create a job for youths, get an Igbo president. The Igbo man by nature knows how to do business. So if he adds academic to it, he will know how to create jobs.